guys and uh, welcome to this ninth episode of my computer craft tutorial series. Uh, in this episode I'm gonna do a, kind of a big build. Uh, I got a, some suggestions on doing like a base uh, monitor control thingy. So uh, as I don't have or I'm using now a new version of computer craft 1.6.3 I believe and also an open peripheral version which supports that but uh, one negativity with that is that uh, as of now there's no uh, a possibility to use bundled cabling with computers so therefore this is only a base monitor type of thing but still there's a lot of things that uh, you can learn from uh, this episode which will probably be a multi-part because I'm gonna do quite a lot uh, but uh, in specific I'm going to use a steam boiler uh, and monitor stuff like that, like uh, how much water it has, fuel, steam and temperature if it's active and stuff like that. I also have some tanks here which I have uh, linked to the computer and I have some refinery servers running and uh, stuff like that. So all of this I can uh, monitor on my uh, computer, also have some energy here. So uh, here it is, so uh, pretty neat, you can see the energy, how much there is in total, how much oil I have, how much fuel I have, uh, how many steam boilers that are online. But I basically made this program dynamic so we can yeah, just add how many you want and it will display here, even though I only have one, I have some like for testing uh, outside. Uh, and refineries online, uh, there's four out of six, so those four I have here are online, as you see, they're running, and uh, two others are uh, yeah, just for testing purposes, which is also outside, they aren't really running, so that's why it's four, of, four, out, of, four out of six. Uh, energy output, here you can see how much RF per tick I generate, and uh, uh, where I get this value from is basically I just check this uh, energy value and uh, yeah, see how much it increases per tick. So uh, you get like an uh, exact amount. So when you add more engines, this will raise and yeah, stuff like that. You can actually try that out. So let's if I get the resident energy cell here um, and I turn this to blue and this to orange. It uh, should uh, update soon and you'll see that it'll... yeah, there you see, now it's suddenly raised a lot and the energy bar is going really fast. And when I remove it again, it will go down in yeah a few seconds, there. Uh, and what one... or most of this is dynamic, so as I said, so you can add multiple th stuff if you want. Uh, but uh, this part here is not dynamic. I'll I'll only show one steam boiler because, yeah, if you, if you can show more if you want to too, but I, it doesn't fit on the screen, and you have to build a bit more advanced. And because I'm gonna make this a tutorial, uh, I didn't want to have too much stuff going on. So uh, yeah, that's uh, basically the contraption we're going to make uh, and I'll go through each part and uh, how we can do or how we can create something like this. So uh, be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is uh, something which is quite useful when you're building something big or yeah, like on your bigger projects. Uh, yeah, this is really useful. Uh, as uh, some of you may, or some of you may do and some may not, uh, if you use this in-game editor it gets kind of messy and uh, it's hard to debug a lot of stuff when uh, there's a lot of stuff. So uh, a solution for that is to use an external editor for your programs. So uh, that's what I'm going to cover now, and uh, you can see how we could do that. 
Okay, so uh, here you have my uh, Minecraft uh, folder, uh, uh, which is uh, important. You have to find the, your Minecraft folder, which uh, yeah, you should know where that is. And then you can go into saves. And then you have to select the name of your world. So in my case, it's a CC dot world. So you select your world, and then you should see a folder called computer. And you go into that one, and uh, here you see uh, a lot of folders. So uh, in my case, uh, where I, which I showed you the computer, here you can see the actual program running and uh, a startup file. Uh, also, if I now go out, or if I go into Minecraft again, and I'll uh, uh, like edit a program on another computer, you'll see another folder show up here. So uh, let's go back to Minecraft and do that. Okay, so uh, here is uh, my computer, or another test computer, not uh, that one. Uh, I'll, I just set a label and I can edit like a uh, test program and then I'll save it, like so. And uh, now if I go back to my folders and um, we can uh, then we can see that happening. Okay, so uh, here you see now I got uh, a folder named one, and I can go in here and you see test. So basically, what these numbers means is uh, the ID of your computer. So uh, when you go into your computer and type uh, ID, you get an, the ID number, and that's the folder here. So if you have like in a computer with the ID 100, you should. Or and when you have programs on it, on it you should see a folder in uh, here, which is named 100, and you can just go into that folder and edit your programs. So uh, let's uh, try this out. Let's edit this one in, uh, for example, Notepad++. Uh, you can use Notepad and WordPad or yeah, most text editors, and like so. So here is basically the uh, same as writing in a terminal. So I could. Uh, do like term clear and set cursor position and you can uh, write hello YouTube like that and uh, now when I saved it uh, the program on uh, the server or my in-game should uh, have changed so uh, let's check it out and see if it works so I'm back in my game here, and uh, now I can write the test, which was the name of the program. And hello YouTube, as you would expect. Also if I edit, you'll see the exact same things as I wrote in my Notepad++. So uh, that's how you can edit the uh, programs uh, on, uh, on an external e text editor, which is a lot better. It doesn't lag, which uh, some servers can do, and uh, yeah, you have a lot more uh, things you can uh, do easier basically uh, and uh, to get your uh, programs to your game you have to, or you have to play single player with the way we just did now uh, or if you own a server and have access to the files you can also go into the server and edit those in the world folder of that server uh, if you don't have access to uh, the server you're playing on and uh, yeah you have to get you don't have access to the files. You can also write your text or files locally and then upload them to Pastebin. And uh, yeah, just make a Pastebin account or something and uh, get um, the Pastebin code and then you just type Pastebin get the, whatever the code is for that program and the name of the program. Like test, this isn't anything so yeah. Just like that, and you can download your uh, files from Pastebin. And there's also other ways of uh, doing it. But uh, yeah, that's basically it for how to use external editors in Minecraft. So uh, that will cover this part of this tutorial. Uh, in the next part, I'll be going through uh, yeah some other functions needed to make that. So see you then.